If you want to sell PDFs, templates, ebooks, or any other kind of PDF through your WordPress website, this video will give you exactly how you can get started for absolutely free and is the easiest and most flexible way to sell PDFs. Let's begin. So here I am in my WordPress website and we'll be using a specific plugin that is designed to sell digital products. It can work with any digital products, images, videos as well, but this video I'm going to focus only on PDFs, but you can take it at and uh, just sell any digital product that you like, even courses for a matter you can do it. So let's head into the plugin section. I'm going to search for that particular plugin. Let's click add plugin here and in the WordPress repository, I'm just going to search for, sorry, easy, oops, spelling error digital downloads. This is the exact name of the plugin. So it'll find the plugin for us and the name suggests easy digital downloads, e-commerce, and it also has payments and subscriptions. So not only can you sell digital products, you can configure all the options, pricing, everything else, delivery, and it gives you a lot of options. It also can collect payments for you. So you don't have to just sell free stuff. You can actually charge money for it. I'm gonna show you the exact process, how to do it. So let's install the plugin here. Let's also activate the plugin. So usually when you set up the plugin for the first time, it's gonna pop up a setup wizard where you can get started and do everything else. I'm gonna skip this part and just go to the settings. I would suggest that you go through this. It'll just ask for basic information because if you're selling something, basically you have to register as a business and you need to info in input some information about your business, your website and your address and everything else. So you can set that up here. What I'll do is go to the settings here and I'll explain why I'm going into settings. You don't have to configure it. I'll go to the payments option here because the payments option is something we need to configure. So I'll enable test mode for now. I'll just do this and I'll just skip this part for now. And why I'm enabling test mode is because if I don't enable test mode, I'll go directly live using the payment method I'll configure, which is Stripe in this case, which I'm going to demonstrate. Now I don't have a Stripe account that is a working out and in India, I think Stripe is not even allowed. We're not, uh, we don't get production access to Stripe. So in this case, I'll just enable the test mode and you can do this too, so you can test things out, everything is working. And when everything works, then you can enable the production mode. Now, do keep in mind that when you enable test mode and then you, let's say, connect with Stripe, which I'm gonna show you. So let's say we, we go here and connect with Stripe. Uh, when you switch to production mode, you'll have to do the connection process once again. So that's something to keep in mind. So since I've enabled test mode, now I'll connect with Stripe for the test mode. So once you switch to production, you'll have to do the process again. Let's click connect with Stripe. And this will take us to the setup process. And you can see here, you're using a test account, test data. It'll give you all the details. And what I'm gonna do is uh, I have a really old account with Stripe, which is a test account. I'm gonna try and log in with that. And if it works, then I'll just show you how the connection works. So let me do that. So I was able to log in using the test account. Now I'm being asked to add an authentication code. I use Google Authenticator, but any two-factor authentication app will work. You might have to set up your Stripe account with 2FA. So if you are creating a new account, the process might be different. So let me add that here, here. And now my Stripe account is connected. I can click connect here. And now you can connect your bank. Now, since I'm doing this as a test mode, uh, possibly any Indian bank wouldn't show up here, but this is the exact process you'll have to go through when you're using it test, as a test account as well. And if you're using it for a live website, you'll just search for your bank, do some information, maybe a test deposit will be done, and then your Stripe will be active. Since I already have, or basically this is a test account, I'll just click to return to easy digital downloads, basically going back to my site so I can start working and showing you how to create products or digital products or PDFs. So now you can see that my Stripe account is connected. Our webhooks are configured correctly. Sometimes you'll do this and you'll be prompted to con connect the webhooks or create webhooks automatically. Just click on it and this will be done. And of course you can see I am connected in test mode. So you can reconnect it and disconnect it and connect in production mode as well. So now we have the plugin installed. We also have sort of payments uh, activated. What we'll do is go back to our payments method here and make sure that Stripe is enabled so that we can actually do a test payment with Stripe. I'm just gonna go here and save my changes. And by the way, you see the other payment methods supported. You have Square, uh, PayPal, and Store Gateway, and you can also enable some icons here if you want to, so that you can just enable them on the site. Let's click Save Changes for this to happen. All right, so payments are now configured. Now it's time to actually create products. And you might be thinking creating a product is too complicated, this is too tough, or this might take a few hours. No, it's actually pretty easy. So let's go to the section where we can create new products. So I'll just go to the download section, which is where you can create digital products. The name is Downloads. And inside the downloads, you can see here that there are no downloads. So because we have created any products. By the way, you can also organize them using category and tag tags, like you do for posts and pages in WordPress, so that if you have a lot of digital products, you can do that. Let's click the add download button to create a new download. 
And now this is the similar or familiar interface where we'll use the WordPress block builder to actually create a product. So I'll just enter here. I just have a demo, a kind of a PDF book here. So I'll just say piano. So simple piano chords practice book. This is where you can add the title and you can also add a description, add some images, basically how the WordPress block builder works. You can add, add everything here. But the main important part is the download section which comes here because this is where you configure the product. So what kind of product is it? Is it a single product? Is it a bundle or is it a service? If you sell services, let's say consulting, you can sell your time here as well. And single product is, let's say a single product. You can also create bundles so that hey, all, all my, let's say piano practice books as a bundle. So you can select it here. Then enter the price. So I'll just say 9.99 USD and you can configure the price or the currency in the settings as well. So if you want to sell something in other currencies, you can configure that. Then you can also have additional details. You can say feature of price variations. Basically you have a lot of features, but I'm gonna show you the simplest way to quickly set up the product here. Let's go to the file section. And this is where you actually create the file or add the file. Because if somebody wants to download something, where is the actual file? So you should have the file already. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the button here I'll just repeat the process so that you can see it. So this is the place where we create the download. You can name the file here and the file URL is something that you can select either from your media library if you have already uploaded it. And if you haven't, just click this link icon. This will open up the media library and I already have the PDF file on my computer. So I'll just drag it here and let go. And this will upload the PDF file to my website now. And now since I've done this, I'll just click insert into download. And now we have this complete URL of the download registered here. Now you can see the file name is already populated, but if you want to change it, you can do that here. So basically you've already uploaded the file. It's pretty easy. You also have some other options. You can add some notes and this will be added to the purchase receipt. So if you have specific instructions, you can add them here. And in the settings, you have some other options where you can configure the download limits, what's the refund status, refund window. So digital products might not, you might not want to have the, uh, or refunds or returns. That's completely up to you. But basically you can create or uh, change these settings here and then other things as well. So you can see, hey, add to cart behavior can be changed and what's the buy button like? And you can copy those settings, place them elsewhere on the site as well. So this is how everything works. Not too complicated. The most two important parts are going into details, uh, choosing the kind of product, the pricing, and then adding the file here. If you do just that, then you are already let's say set up and rest is something that you can just understand to configure uh, settings better and like something more specific to how you like it. So now that this is done, we'll click publish because we're gonna publish this as well. Let's click publish. And now the page is published. So I'll click and open this in a new tab so I can show you the experience of how somebody would or somebody who's trying to purchase this product, what kind of experience they would go through. So let's go here. And since I did not uh, add a cover block or add, add some images, the page looks kind of bland, but you get the idea. You can change the title, add images, add a description. And one important thing that I completely missed out on mentioning in the main tutorial is how to add a download image. Similar to how you have cover images on your blog post, you can also set a specific download image for the product, like a product image, but for the digital download. So let me show you how it's done. So on the product page itself, you can see here, I don't have any description just for this example so that you can see how the actual download image comes and is visible on the product page. So the section where to add the download image is just on the right side. So if you just focus here, you can see here that you have, once you go to the download, then you have the Piano Chords Practice Book, which is the name of the product. And you can click here and set a download image. This is where you can set a download image and whatever dimensions you like, you can keep it vertical, horizontal, whatever the product fits or whatever the, whatever the resolution or the aspect ratio fits a specific product. You can click on that and then the media library opens up. By the way, this is just folders I am create of use to organize my media library. If you want to learn how I do that, then when this video ends, you see some videos on screen, you can click one of those videos and that will be it. So I already have an image uploaded here for this specific book, you can just upload one, you can drag and drop it here, go to upload files, select it from your computer elsewhere and add the files here. Once you've done that, all you have to do is select the image, click the set download image, and you'll see this download image here. All you have to do is save the blog post or save the product page here. And once that is done, now you can open it. So if I click uh, the tab and open this page in a new, a new tab, this is now where you see it. It's a piano chords practice book. 
and it's now on the screen. So this is how it looks like since I have made this vertical image, depending on the blog post itself, because if let's say you don't have a sidebar, you might want to make it uh, full width and something. So this is how the actual download image looks like on the product page. I just removed all the content. So you can see where it appears just below the title, and then you can add more content description and even more images as part of the actual product page itself. So that's how you add the download image to the product. And let's continue with the rest of the video. And it'll still look great, right? So basically, when the customer or the potential customer has seen the page, they are convinced enough, they're persuaded enough that, hey, this is the way, this is I want something I want to purchase, they can just click the purchase button here. And I'm demonstrating how the interface will look like for someone who is trying to uh, purchase the product. So once you click uh, the add to cart or when the product is added to cart, they can click the checkout button, which will take them to the checkout. And in the checkout process, the information is pretty much the same. How you do any checkout, enter information, enter your card information, checkout, and the product is yours. Uh, just to keep in mind, since I'm already logged into my site, the interface for logging in might be different. So if you just test it out and you use an incognito window, you'll slightly see the option of logging in, logging out. So what I'll do is just scroll down here and just enter some dummy information. So I've entered a dummy information, dummy email, first name, last name, and now we need to use the payment information or the test account we've set up. So I'll go here, enter the dummy card information from Stripe, which is, and the expression I think can be anything. So I'll just do this. And the CVV can also be something demonstration. So now that we have this, we can do this as well, that we can enter information or enter our information for faster checkout. So this is optional. I'm just gonna delete this easily and I can delete this as well. Since it's optional, I'll scroll down and click purchase. And now the purchase is complete. You can see here, I can click on this and this file will be downloaded to my computer. So I'll just right click, open a new tab. And since I have a download manager installed, my interface might look different, but for most people, it'll just directly start downloading. So this is the ebook that you can see here. I'll just close this. And you can see the payment receipt here as well. Every details here, when did I purchase? What's the payment mode? What's the total, subtotal? And if I click the view order details, I can go into a detailed order view as well. And how much time did it take to, for, for us to set this up? Less than a few minutes of time. So that's the easiest and the fastest way to sell digital products. And of course you can create multiple digital products, categories of products, and just go bonkers with it and just create tons and tons of products. So coming back here through my screen, this is how you create digital products and PDFs and start selling those through your WordPress website in just the easiest way possible. Easy digital downloads is the easiest way to sell digital products and it's easy as well, of course. So check out the link in the description. It's absolutely free to get started. We have some add-ons and premium uh, collections of add-ons if you want to go the next step and just sell a lot of products. But if you have any questions about easy digital downloads, how to set this up, make sure to use the comments and like, share, and subscribe, do all that good stuff. And you're watching Yuvraj from WBGanner. I'll catch you in the next video. Take care.